Welcome to the chain rule video. In this video we're going to learn first when we need to use the chain rule and second we're going to practice actually using the chain rule for a few different functions. Okay so here we go. When do we need to use the chain rule? Well we need to use the chain rule when we have functions within functions. So in a sense we have multiple layers to our functions. And if we look at this function here, this function can be thought of as an outer function of, say, a different variable u, which is the square root of u. And then this function u is a function that depends on x, and it's equal to 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. So we have the outer function, which is the square root function, and the inner function, which is the 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. So let's look at this second function. Notice that we have the same inner function, but this time our outer function is 1 over u cubed. So the inner function the 4x squared plus 2x minus 1, that's the same, but the outer function has changed. Let's look at one, one last example here. So this time, our inner function is the same, but our outer function is an exponential, and it's 2 to the u. And again, that inner function is just the same. Okay, now um, the chain rule tells us that what we do is we take the derivative of the outer function and then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So again, when you've got function with multiple levels, so we have functions within functions, what you're going to do is you're going to take the func derivative of the outer function and multiply by the derivative of the inner function. Okay, so let's kind of um, very simply see why this is. Okay, we're going to look at a, a really basic example here. And it says, suppose we have a truck driver that earns 50 cents per mile traveled, and he drives the truck at a speed or a rate of 60 miles per hour. How much does he make per hour? Okay, well, if he makes 50 cents per mile, That's one way to represent his pay right there. And um, if he drives 60 miles per hour, then his pay rate is going to be 0.5 times 60, so that's $30 per hour. Okay, well, another way to think of that is in terms of, of rates. So um, if I think of P as the pay, then this is like dp dm. So we have pay, and this depends on the miles. Okay, and then this second rate is um, dm dt. So this is miles per when I multiply those, I got pay per hour. So this is pay per hour. So you're going to see this same basic idea here where um, P is a function of M, but M is a function of T. So we take the derivative of the P part, that's that and multiply by the derivative of our inside function. Okay, so let's go back to those examples that we were looking at at the very beginning. Actually, let's look at the chain rule real quick. So the chain rule says if we have um, a function that's a composition of function or you have a function within functions, then what you to take the derivative what you do is you take the derivative of 
the outside function. You take the derivative, you let the inside stay the same, you take the derivative of the outside function, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, another way to write that is if f is the composition is the composition of g, then you leave g the same, take the derivative of the f, and then multiply by the derivative of the g. Another way that we just wrote this is df dx, if we're taking the derivative with respect to x, what we do is take the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So here, this is sort of closer to what we have up here, um, but it's the same idea. And we're going to have lots of different ways that we sort of write this chain rule, but the basic premise is you take the derivative of the outside function and multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so now we're ready to go back to that very first example. Okay, um, before I actually get started writing the derivative, or finding the derivative, the first thing we always did when we had square roots is we rewrote them as powers. So we're going to go ahead and do that before we actually even start talking about the chain rule. So we have 4x squared plus 2x minus 1, and this is all raised to the 1 half power. Okay? So our inside function is that stuff that's inside the parentheses, and it's the 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. So if I'm going to take the derivative of my f, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the outside function and multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Okay? So, the outside function is a power, so we're just going to use the power rule on that. So I'm going to have 1 half. My inside function stays the same. And that's going to be raised to the negative 1 half. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of that inside. So I'm going to put this in a slightly different notation this time. We're not, we're not quite done with the derivative yet, but I'm going to write this as 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. This is raised to the negative 1 half. And I'm going to write this using the um, uh, notation that we've used before. So we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So remember that d dx, that means take the derivative of the 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay, And so that's just a, a little bit of extra notation there that you're going to see in the book and in lots of different places actually. And it's, it's helpful to keep track of what you're doing. And this is raised to the negative 1 half. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Okay, so the derivative of the inside this time is going to be 8x plus 2. Okay, so this is the answer. But sometimes books will um, try to simplify that a little. And if you take this 1 half, and you distribute it through that 8x plus 2, you're going to get 4x plus 1, and you're going to still have that 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. And so this um, is just another way we can write that derivative. And again, I am perfectly happy with, so this is our final answer, I'm perfectly happy with this answer. Either one is fine with me. 
Okay, so let's look at the next example. Okay, so here we have that same inside function. Um, and we're going to go ahead and rewrite because I know we're going to need to. So I have 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 raised to the negative 3 power. So our inside function is that 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. Same thing it was last time. So I'm going to go ahead and take my derivative. So we're going to leave the inside the same, and we're just going to deal with the power. So I'm going to use the power rule. So again, this inside function is going to stay the same. I'm going to write it as 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Okay, so this, remember, this is the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so our derivative is going to look like negative 3 times 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 to the negative fourth power. And the derivative of our inside, that is 8x plus 2. So there's our derivative. Okay, so let's look at one more example. Okay, so we have one more example here. We're supposed to find the derivative of y, which is the fifth root of 1 minus t cubed. Okay, so before we actually start calculating the derivative, we always rewrite those roots as exponents. So this would be to the 1 -fifth power. Okay, so what I want you to do now is pause the video and um, see if you can calculate that derivative on your own. Okay, so hopefully you paused and get, gave it a try. Let's identify that inside function. So my inside function is 1 minus t cubed. So this is my inside function, the stuff inside the parentheses. Okay, um, my derivative is going to be called dy dt. So whenever I have y equals, I'm going to use that differential notation. The variable is, um, or the, it's called y equals, so this is dy, and the variable in our function is t, so it's going to be dy dt. Notice it's not dy dx because my variable is an x here, it's a t, so it's dy dt. Okay, so now, Again, what the chain rule tells us is we kind of take the derivative of the outside function. The outside function here is just a power, so I'm going to have 1 fifth. I'm going to have that inside function raised to the 1 fifth minus 1, so that's negative 4 fifths power. So here I have that 1 minus t cubed. And then I'm multiplying by the derivative of that inside function. So we're multiplying by the derivative of 1 minus t cubed. Okay, so we're going to have 1 fifth times 1 minus t cubed to the negative 4 fifths. And the derivative of my inside function, so here um, sometimes we mess these up a little bit when we have um, a 1 or a, a number is the first term. When you take the derivative of that 1, you just get 0, okay? So um, the derivative of the inside, we're going to have negative 3t squared. So this is our derivative. And we could leave our answer exactly like that. I'm happy with that. Or we could simplify a little and write this as negative 3 fifths t squared times 1 minus t cubed to the negative 4 fifths power. So that's it for this video. Um, look for some more examples with the chain rule um, in the next one.